We often hear that the internet is destroying our memory. Well, a London-based startup called Memrise is using comedy pictures of cats to help us remember things. Co-founder Ed Cook joins us today. Welcome to Tech Sessions. I'm with Ed Cook today. He's the co-founder of Memrise and a grand master of memory, Ed. That's intriguing. What exactly does that mean? Um, you get to be a grand master of memory if you can learn a thousand digit number in an hour or a pack of cards in under two minutes. And so um, when I was a bit younger, I really got into memory techniques and these quite strange competitions which happened. Um, and so yeah, I trained up in what are basically sort of a collection of quite powerful learning techniques, um, sort of centered on the idea that if you make stuff vivid and associate it to things that you know, you can remember much more than you think you can. So is it visual association? Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's semantic association in all its, in all its characters. So, uh, so that includes visual association, of course, but it's often like an emotional or thought association where you connect something together, you see some sort of ring of meaning, and then you kind of remember those two things in connection as a result. Now, you've reinterpreted and, and uh, all of the skills that you have with memory learning and built a business around it, Memrise. Right. So tell us how, how the idea kind of formulated and why the time is right for, for this business. There's an awful lot of learning which goes on. Um, and um, even if um, like there's a trend today towards you know, flexible, critical thinking and so on and so forth, the vast majority of learning remains basically just understanding concepts and facts and being able to connect them together. So that's true of learning a language where you have to have a vocabulary of a few thousand words to be able to say anything. Um, and it's true of history and geography and chemistry and so on. Um, and basically, like, people learn ridiculously inefficiently because, um, because you know, memories fade over time and you fail to review them. They don't test themselves in the ideal way. And so what we did with Memrise is we, we put all the knowledge we could find about the art and science of memory to try and create basically fun learning games where you can store that information in your mind much faster than you'd otherwise be able to. So why is the time right for this kind of business? Why not? Well, I mean, it's... Uh, it's now possible to, um, to crowdsource enormous amounts of content using the internet and to present it in a highly interactive, sort of fun and quite sophisticated way. Um, and so that wasn't really possible four years ago. Um, and it's very possible now and with apps it's extremely possible as well. So, um, so it's a good time technology wise. Um, more generally, like, I think people are increasingly looking to get entertainment from learning. So, like, you know, in some sense, when you're reading The Guardian, you're sort of learning about stuff and, you know, people do that out of a sense of fun. And so, um, so we put a really a big amount of effort into gamifying language learning with Memrise um, and using all these techniques. We have heard from authors like Nicholas Carr that the internet is destroying our memories, that actually our short-term memory is being impaired because we're relying on things like Google to provide answers for us and to be our memory. Do you agree with that, or is that no. a gross simplification? Well, actually, I think that's, um, that's exactly wrong. Um, I think that's uh, like, uh, it couldn't be more wrong in a way, because I think that the quality, the memorability of content on the internet now is higher than, um, than anything which has ever existed before. A cat dressed as a shark on a Roomba, for example. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is incredibly uh, memorable. Well, I'll touch back on that, that idea in a second. But um, yeah, so with, with memes and with the kind of quality of filtered content you get, um, we're actually, I think, remembering much more than we ever used to. I mean, yes, it's sort of fragmented, maybe. Yes, it covers a much wider variety of things. But, um, you know, our memory is hugely improved, in a sense. Um, second thing to say is that, um, is that our memories were always terrible. Right? Like, there's, there's, no, there's no novelty in the fact well, that... Well, it's definitely worse post-childbirth, in my experience. Right. But you well, think it's always been really bad. Well, that's one factor. So, you know, we tend to um, very naturally forget the majority of what we experience. Um, and so I don't think the internet has changed that. And I think it's kind of a weird way of thinking to talk about the internet changing our brain when like anything you do or see or think changes your brain. That's the nature of the brain. So you're not so with The forest changes your brain and like okay, playing ping yeah. pong changes your brain. And so the specific idea that the internet changes your brain isn't particularly interesting. So you're not with Susan Greenfield on this, that the internet no, is, yeah. Is, yeah. Nonsense, nonsense. The internet's very good for our brains, I think. Yes. Yeah. Clay Shirky mm -hmm. said that by getting machines to do the grunt work, we could free our cognitive load, so our brains and our time was free to do more interesting things. Is that true, or are we just watching pictures of cats dressed as sharks on Roombas? Um, great question. Um, I think that, I mean, he, he is right that, um, that we have the opportunity to offload an awful lot of what's boring on the computers and then sort of spend our time, you know, philosophizing and thinking really intelligent thoughts and inventing cool things. One of the things we discovered at Memrise 
where we, just to explain how Memorize works, we have a crowdsourced system of, of basically memes for learning. So whatever you're learning, you're learning like the, the, the Spanish for table is like la mesa. Um, and then lots of people have provided ways of remembering that. And so one might be like, oh, there's a big messy thing on the table. And you're like, mess, mesa, table, and you just kind of connect them together. Anyway, what we found was that the most powerful memes people were creating were the similar to the sorts of things which fly around the internet. They were like cute pictures of cats um, and other other sort of, you know, basically you'd internet think... Internet memes. Internet memes, yeah. you know, kind of nonsensical things. Um, but actually, pe people turn out to be kind of learning from these better than they were from the most sophisticated, you know, well-crafted, scholarly inputs. And uh, another sort of piece of research I read recently was that Facebook posts, um, even if they're not yours, um, are more memorable than sentences of equivalent complexity taken from books or articles by a factor of about three, which is normally the difference between an amnesic and a normal person. And so we have incredible memory for memes, and we have incredible memory for stuff which is casual and social and so on. And it's about um, context then, it, isn't it? It's about context and it's about um, the fact that kind of what goes into the mind easily comes out of the mind easily. There's a sort of inverse kind of law of physics there going, going on. Um, and so anyway, what we've done out of Memorize is we, we, we sort of, we looked into this kind of phenomenon of memes, cat memes, um, and so we decided to, um, and we, you know, we found people were learning faster. So we decided to uh, package that into a language learning app called Cat Academy, which, um, um, which we're actually launching this week. Um, and the cool thing about Cat Academy is that people turn out to like, learn really effortlessly and incredibly fast from cat memes. And it's obviously cats. You're saying that low cats have a higher purpose I think the, 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 the kind of the final goal of lolcats is actually for learning because they, they enchant the meaning of a word or phrase. If you illustrate it with a lolcat, it becomes this kind of pleasant, positive, attention-grabbing, engaging thing, and therefore you learn from it in a kind of fluid and fun way. And so, uh, yeah, so we're quite hopeful for the, for the idea that we can turn learning into a kind of a genuinely playful, part-time activity, the sort of thing you're doing on buses and so on, um, and then kind of turn it into an addictive activity. And talking of memes, you've been exploring what can be done with vines as well. We do have a side project where we are, I mean, I've always loved the idea of like short videos. I mean, when I, when I learned French, I used to remember all the words I learned from the kind of beautiful barmaid and the, the particular moment that I could see her face sort of saying, ah, Edouard, Cersei, <laughs> Pontuflar, or whatever. And I'd be like, ah, oh, that's so, so magical. And I've always thought that language learning should contain that kind of magic. Um, and uh, anyway, with, with the sort of Vine and, and all these other sort of video formats, short, sharp, they can load as fast as a photo. Um, we think there's a kind of, a, there's a magic form of dictionary there. So we're kind of playing around with the idea of creating basically a dictionary of the English language, effectively made out of short looping videos. And we're kind of experimenting with the format and stuff. Um, and that, that's, that, that's also an exciting side project. Are you finding that there's um, a particular age of the people that are using memoirs, that maybe there's a younger generation who are yeah. responding better, maybe their brains are more flexibly yeah. wired, perhaps? Um, yeah, well, there's, I mean, I think certainly um, people think of learning as, um, as something they want to pursue uh, just as part of being a kind of adult, especially between the ages of, sort of 18 and 34, that's kind of where they, the, the bulk of our users come. And they often come from places like Reddit or gaming forum, forums or, or The Guardian. <laughs> I'll say they all the same thing. Um, um, which is to say that they're, they're sort of intelligent young adults. And the idea of sort of speaking Italian or being able to name 120 different kinds of tree feels like a fun thing, like a positive impact on their life. And I think, there's, there's, you know, especially since humans are becoming redundant, I think that like this is going to be a huge trend in the future. It's people just learning stuff just to sort of keep themselves busy and have fun. You know. um, Ed, that's been fascinating. Thank, Thank you pleasure. very much. Thank you.